This is a production of PBS Charlotte. The following episode of Charlotte Cooks is brought to you by Central Piedmont Community College and viewers like you. Thank you. Hi there, and welcome to this edition of Charlotte Cooks. I have got Chef Cheryl Watkins with me today, and she is here for Miss Elsie's Caribbean Bed and Breakfast, which is located on a fictitious island here in Charlotte. What's the name of that island? Celia's Island. Celia's Island. When you go to this place, you get to totally escape to the Caribbean. And one of the things that her guests rave about is her Caribbean breakfast. And so she's going to make for us today a fried bake with a saltfish stew. And so, Miss Cheryl, first thing we're going to get started on is the bakes, aren't we? Yes, we will. Okay, so let's. what are we going to use for the bakes? For the bakes, we're going to start with uh, about three cups of flour. Okay. Right? We're going to put in our baking powder. Okay. Right? We're going to put a little sugar, a little salt, and we'll mix up your dough. Okay. Right? And these are, you're just going to mix these dry ingredients together Correct. so they get nicely incorporated. Right. And mm -hmm. then we're going to add a little bit of fat. This is quite like making some of the pie dough because, except we don't have baking soda or baking fat to our pie dough. And so what we're going to be doing here is mixing our dry ingredients together. Then we're going to put our fat in and mix that up until it's kind of mealy. It looks kind of like a really coarse cornmeal. Um, you could leave it a little bit lumpier if you want to, but I wouldn't leave it very lumpy. And we're going to add some water to it and bring it all together. This is a lot like making a biscuit. You know, these are, uh, in fact, you mentioned, Miss Cheryl, that they were like... Um, Bakes are to the Caribbean as biscuits are to the South. There we go. There, you there go. we go. Okay, so you just added your water and you just, and once again, you're using a fork. You can use one of those little pastry um, knives mm -hmm. if exactly. you have one. You can use your fingers, get mm -hmm. in there and meal it, it around with your them. hands. Get it all nice and incorporated. All right, so we're gonna mix that until it looks like this. And then we're gonna let this dough sit for about 45 minutes, okay? 30 to 45 minutes until it's all nice and what we call risen a little bit, okay? This doesn't have any yeast in it, but the baking powder has got the double acting baking powder and that's and adding the water to it is what's making it do the action. So Ms. Cheryl, what are we gonna do with it after it's reached this point and we've rested it? Once we've reached the, uh, the we've we'll mixed it and we have the rest thing and it rests, okay. then we'll set our pot to uh, fry. So okay. we'll put a little oil in our pot yeah, let's, let's use fire. this one over use here. Use this one. Mm -hmm. okay. so turn on our fire. Fill your pot with about oh, two-thirds, enough for the bakes to float. Why don't you show us what to do with the dough, and I'll get the heat going for so you. So then the dough, we come back here, and we uh, flour, flour your uh, cutting board. And that's just to keep it from sticking, right? Correct. You make it a little smooth. You grab your fork out of the way. Cleaning, and you flour it nice so the dough doesn't stick. And then you just start cutting out your portion. So you cut one, two, you can probably get about, uh, for every three cups of flour, you can probably get about mm, 12 to 15 bakes out of the, okay. your mix. So you get a nice little mix and you cut a few and we'll just cut a few here. And then we'll uh, go ahead and just start to roll them. You'll and come. you try to make them as consistent in size as possible. Correct. But, you know, usually you can end up with some big ones, some small ones, and right. it doesn't matter because you're going to monitor the, the frying of them each on their own. Right. And so once you get them all folded up into little balls like that, we're going to lay them out on a sheet pan, and we're going to flatten them a little bit so that they actually end up looking like this. Okay? And so once they look like this, what's going to happen is now you're going to let them sit for another 15 minutes and then we're going they're going to get nice and fluffy and we're going to put them in the oil over here and we're going to cook them up and i'm going to do that while cheryl is helping us with the saltfish stew how are you doing over there with those little balls we're good we're almost done oh boy we make a little roll up here and we just want them to be Cute little roll balls, nice mm -hmm. and soft, let them rise. You cover them over with a cloth when you're done until you're ready to fry them. And make sure you use a nice clean cloth. A nice napkin is a good thing to use. You don't need to cover it with cellophane or anything really tight like that. Just something loose just to keep the surface from drying out. So 
you're doing this. Mm -hmm. So what you're, you're taking it, you're rolling it into and a ball in your hand. And then you just pinch it to bring a nice, neat ball in your hand. So you're just pinching it like a this. pinch and fold, correct. A little okay. pinch and fold. And okay. so what that's doing is a couple of things. It's giving it a nice, smooth surface on top, correct. isn't it? Yes. You want it to be okay. nice and soft and smooth All right. so that they have the, the chance to breathe. Okay. And then we're just going to spread that out like that and put them on the uh, sheet pan. Is that it? You're going to get a rolling pin. Rolling pin. And you're going to roll them Here. out when you're ready. Show us, so Batman. <laughs> <laughs> so you give yourself a little room, okay. right? You grab a dough and you take one and you just keep it nice and firm and you roll it for about size of a little more than a, a, a little bigger than a, a disc or, you know, biscuit size actually, if that's familiar. Okay. Right? And you want to get a Depends nice roll on it. Depends if you're making a cat head biscuit. Correct, correct. <laughs> and then you just take them in your hand and you stretch it out. So your it's a oil nice is hot, correct, and you set okay. them aside okay. so that your oil is nice and hot. Okay. And you'll know your oil is hot. You can test your oil, A, by, I just use a little dot of water on my finger, on my okay. pinky finger, or I test my oil with um, a little dusting of flour. And okay. if you want to feel a little popping, a little slight pop, I want your oil to get at about a good 350 degrees not to burn, but okay. nice and hot. So you want to get a nice sizzle on the, on the, uh, the, the bakes. So while you're doing that, why don't we talk about the next step? And sure. as soon as these are ready, we're going to start giving them a nice little browning in the oil. But one thing that we're looking at to go in our bakes is a salt fish stew. Okay, so one of the things that we're looking at here is a salt cod. And you can get salt cod from a lot of different places. And this, this, I got this at the local grocery store. It usually will come wrapped in a bag. And sometimes it comes um, in just like a regular old um, snack bag, like you find potato chips in. But you know, you can find them in the freezer and that kind of thing. So this one is a product of Canada. And it comes in a nice little wooden box. And you open it up. And what you see inside here is the salt cod itself. Okay, you can see big pieces of the salt cod. Okay, you're going to pull this out. And you can see we've got nice long big pieces of um, salted fish. And so what we have to do with this to get this ready to make is we have to remove the salt from the fish. And so what we do for that is there's a couple ways of doing it. If you want to do it the long way is you basically take the fish and you put it in some water and you get it all nice and wet and let it soak overnight. We'll pull that out in just a second and show it to you. Um, or you can take it and you can boil it, but you'd have to trade that water out, what, two or three times two or if three you're boiling? Two times to get the salt out Yeah, because there is a lot of salt in this. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to soak this overnight, I would also trade out that water maybe once just before once or twice. you actually, once or twice, yeah, yeah. just before you get it um, finished so that we can actually not have the salt. All right, do you think this is ready to go? I think so. Let's take a chance. Okay, why don't you show uh, us how to take a chance here? Got a little bit of water. There we oh, go. yeah, there we go. Okay, so just drop down. those in. Yes. You're going to lay them down in your pot. You okay. can lay as many as you can get in your pot. Don't crowd them. Don't crowd them. You know. Leave plenty of room <laughs> so you can flip them and move them around, all right? There you go, right, right. And you just slide them over. We have enough room for about five in this size pot. Okay. Where's a spatula? There you go. Okay. And you just keep an eye on them so mm -hmm. that they don't... Um, and you just want them to, to brown on either side. And the bakes will float. And s like people from Guyana will say, they call them floats. Okay. In, in, uh, Dominican, uh -huh. in the Dominican Republic, they're, they're bakes or Johnny okay. Cake. Johnny cakes, right. okay. I've they heard also of Johnny can cakes make Johnny before, cake yeah. before. Mm -hmm. And um, Jamaicans call them uh, floats. Okay. Right? And, because and they float things. when they're cooking. Correct. Okay. And we have bakes. And, and people, some people make them round. Some people don't even flatten them. Okay. Some people just make them, they drop them in the, the mixer dough. Maybe it's a little softer. It's okay. not as dry. And okay. they'll just drop them in the oil and you can have them as. So they're, they're served in a, a variety of ways, as always with all cuisine. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a little mix of. of different styles to present okay. the bakes. Okay. okay. So when you let them brown on either side and you want them to come to a nice light caramel brown, 
then you, you set them aside, you put them on a piece of parchment paper okay. or a piece of a paper towel on okay. a plate if you have that. Okay. You put them down, you cover them, because you don't, if, if you have to layer them, you're going to put paper in between right, each right. layer so, so everybody dries out. Right. right, and you're drying out the grease. You don't right. want the grease to come, okay. to be too greasy on, on, the, on, the, on the float. Okay. So as this one is preparing, this one oh, looks look like he's about yet. ready to turn over, right? Okay. A little one here. A little bit of color. In some places, as my grandmother would say, I think I needed to brown a little bit more. Okay, <laughs> so okay. That's what we would do, just a little just darker. Just let it stay in there just a Not little too bit dark, more. Because I don't, okay. like, I don't like burnt food. So. No, I don't think anybody uh, likes burnt food, unless it's well, a hot dog. It, 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 <laughs> and so we, I uh, love burnt hot dogs. We just brown them down a little bit. Oh, they're nice, getting nice and fluffy nice in there and too, fluffy and, they? Yes. And that's the, the, the deliciousness in, in mm -hmm. your float because you want to be able to take your salt fish, slice right. it, put it inside. So it's got a little, like a little right. you pocket make it sandwich. like a little mini sandwich. Yeah. Right? So when you do that, you do it with eggs, you do it with a salt fish stew, you could do it with um, the fish cake. Okay. However you want to serve it, serve a plantain and a little salad. That's usually okay. how we present the meal. All right. And um, everything for me has to have a little plantain. My grandmother loved Oh, plantain, so yeah. plantain and, 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 and salt fish and, and bakes. Now, Jamaicans usually do salt fish with ackee. Okay. And ackee is a traditional fruit on the, in the Caribbean. Now, mostly the Brit British islands okay. have ackee and salt fish. Okay. And that's a traditional staple in, that side, in okay. the British islands in the Caribbean. Okay. And that's tradition. Africans use it as well. Uh, Spanish people call it bacalao. Okay. And bacalito, so a lot of the Latin countries, right. that's how they serve right. it. Right. Italians use it. Italians right. use it, and they use it with um, the polenta. Okay. And it's served with uh, the polenta and salt fish. And so when I have guests from all around the world, it's not a staple it, it, that everybody's not familiar it's with. It's really interesting how sometimes, um, even though we say this is a typical Caribbean breakfast, Correct. you're going to find these same elements all across, all across the world, the world. served in different ways and Absolutely. all kinds of things. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to finish these up. Why don't we get started on the fish stew? Sure. Absolutely. So what do, you, what do you need to do for the fish stew? For the salt fish stew, mm -hmm. I'm going to start over here. I'm going okay. to step to the Ooh, room. Listen to him. You can almost hear him whistling. Yes. And I'm going to we'll throw some in. Okay, so, some so mm -hmm. the um, salt fish stew, you're going to make your pan stew, hot. I want to heat my pot. And okay. then I'm going to um, just put a little oil, a um, teaspoon, tablespoon of oil, because okay. you don't want the, the salt fish to stick. No, you and don't. And what you want is your main ingredients. Okay. Uh, and so I'm going to pass those to you. If you call them out, I'm going to stand over here and okay. if I'll you pass give me. Here. Here's your garlic. You just make sure the oil gets all over your pot, stir and saute it in good, right? Okay. And then you're going to drop a little garlic, All right? Give me a little and garlic. Some onions. You're going to give me some onions. Some peppers. You want onions to some give it a mangers. nice flavor. That's right. That's some right. chopped mangers. Give me some red peppers inside this stew here. You want to brown everybody down. Give me a nice caramelization inside the pot. We're flipping these over here. Okay. Right. You're flipping so. your bakes. All right, now these are almost done, Cheryl. What do you think? Do you think these need to go yeah. a little bit longer? No, they're very good. They're good? Yeah, you've done a nice job, All Chef. Right. Put them on your thing. Well, thank you, Chef. <laughs> you're so welcome. <laughs> and over here, you're going to give me a little uh, thyme, right? Mm -hmm. Give me I, my favorite thing is some scotch bonnet uh. peppers. You gotta have the now, heat in Caribbean food. You're gonna have to tell us about Scotch bonnets because Scotch. I've got a bowl of Scotch bonnets here, and I want you to tell me about when I go to the store and look at Scotch bonnets. What am I looking at? They're colorful. So mm -hmm. when they're green, they're not as hot as when they're yellow and red. These are milder. You can make good hot sauce with the green. Okay. But you want the red ones and the yellow ones make a nice hot pepper sauce. If you want to just put that in some vinegar with onions and, and make that a, a seasoning. No, this I, one, on the other hand. I've heard people say that you can um, put boiled carrots in with them to make it not quite so hot. Absolutely. Kind of like put a, a little pinch of sugar in your vinegar. You put it in a bottle and you let shake it. Shake it up. Absolutely. Now I'm going to add my salt fish to this. So you take okay. this out of your water here. All right. So show them that salt fish. Okay. This so is it, a salt fish cup. Okay. All right. It's a pretty piece of fish. Mm -hmm. You put it in your pot, 
and you just flake it down. You just break it up. You break it, break it, break so it. So you don't have to do that beforehand. You just put it right in your pot? Right. You put it in the pot and you break it up. Here's yeah. a fork? Yes. Let me get these out of here, and I think that's it for the bakes. Right. And you just take your fork and you just start flaking. You cut it, cut it with your fork, and you, and I like, I can do both ways. Get you. Nice piece of salt fish. So you want it to be kind of flaky. You don't yes. want it to be like all mushy. You just no. want it to be nice and flaky. Oh boy, look at this. It's going to be spicy, y'all. Delicious, delicious. Oh, this thing yeah. delicious. It doesn't have to be hot, and that's an optional uh, ingredient, really, if you don't want to. Um, you can make use it, it as hot as you want. Absolutely, to. absolutely. But saltfish is really just like a mild. You don't have to overkill. Some people who like pepper will always add pepper, so you leave room for people to add pepper to their. To now, their could you fish. use a jalapeno in this? You can, but. It just depends on the flavor. I prefer the Scotch bonnet. Because really they have a very distinct, distinct flavor, flavor. Too. It yeah. gives you the unique. Because Scotch bonnet is really what makes Caribbean food distinct in its flavor. It makes it different than absolutely, jalapeno. Food, absolutely, right? absolutely. Yeah. So you start with that. You put in your ingredients. You come with your seasonings. We can have our seasonings here. We have, I personally just like to add a little curry okay. to, my, to my saltfish. Okay. Just a little pinch. Right. And this is just a regular curry powder that you can buy in the store? Exactly. You don't have to make up any Nothing kind of special, special curries? A little paprika. Okay. Right? And you give me a little pinch of black pepper. Not much, because you already got the Because we already have or them the done. scotch bonnets. I like a little parsley. So you give me my green. I love it for the color. I'm and very colorful in my food. You know, a lot of times, folks, when you get parsley on your plate as a garnish. Parsley is usually the most nutritious part of the dish that's on your plate. So parsley is a very, very, it's very high in iron. Absolutely. It's got a lot of really good things going on with it. So don't be shy in using parsley. It's really delicious. Oh, that looks it's delicious, food. Cheryl. So we stir it in, make sure everything is all cooked is in it? really well. Almost done. Yeah, just done. Okay. And uh, what else do we need to do? I think we're done. We're going to garnish. Drop a little, uh, Scallion on top. Okay. And so, one thing that you mentioned also that goes with this dish is plantains, fried yes. plantains. Yes. So what I have here, I want you to tell me about these plantains because you know you go to the store sometimes and you see the plantains and you never know what kind to buy. Right. 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 This is what I found in the store just the other day. Okay. So, when I'm looking to buy a plantain for this dish. What would I look for and what would I choose? When you're looking for plantain, plantain you want, I'm going to turn the fire down just a sure. tad. When you're looking at plantain, plantain you really want it to be, a beautiful plantain is always the one that's big and yellow that looks like uh, a banana. Right, As okay. yellow as a banana, that's okay. pretty. But you want a good ripe plantain mm -hmm. to have some tenderness. So like you okay. know when a banana is not too ripe and not too soft, yeah, when like they're these. a little bit dark like this, mm -hmm. that means they're getting really ripe. Okay. So you want to hold it, you want to be able to squeeze it a little bit, you want okay. to have a little tenderness to it. Right. The softer it is, of course, the sweeter it is. Okay. Now green, green plantain, we normally use green plantain when we do like a fish stew, like if you're doing a kingfish, like you're doing an escovitch. Because these you're aren't doing, sweet. Right. Okay. Or you can do it like Haitians do it. Haitians take green plantain, mm -hmm. they'll slice it, mash it inside the skin, mm -hmm. salt it, fry it, mm -hmm. then they'll come back and Put it back in the skin, mash it again, and they eat it. Wow, oh, like a tostone. Mm, there you oh, go. Oh, you guys have seen those, yes. I'm sure. A tostone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So, and what about these? And then these are overripe. So these are your overripe plant. And you've got to be really careful with these because these can be too dry. Okay. If, they get, if the skin is dark like this and, and if there's no firmness in it, it's dry. You don't want to buy that one. Okay. All right? So okay. we won't get that. So answer, this is what you're looking for for a sweet, juicy fried plantain. Right. If you like you, sweet plantain. And if you're doing it for not so sweet, you want to get the green ones. Mm -hmm. And think about more of a savory dish for mm -hmm. this, Correct. like with your fish. And these, leave them in the store. Mm -hmm. And okay. if you're using a green plantain, you, we also serve green plantain usually boiled. So okay. you can boil a, okay. you boil a green plantain, you take your fish, you take your stew, okay. your onions, you put it on top, and you serve that on, as a side dish. Does it have a banana flavor? 
It's a little bit like a banana, but planting still. Not they're quite. cousins, but they're right. not the okay. same. Okay, all right. right. It's not the okay. same flavor. Got no. it. Cousins, mm -hmm. but not the same. Right. All right. So, how about we go ahead and plate up? You want to do that? Absolutely. Okay. So, what we're going to grab is a couple of plates. Sure. And why don't you put the fish okay. stew in here? Sure. And I'm going to grab a little bit of salad because we're going to put a little bit of salad with this. Okay. I want to borrow your scoop of chef. Sure. The salad is, I, I love green salads with just about everything. And I'll put salad on almost everything I'm going to be eating. So then I'm going to grab a big. Mm -hmm. Ooh, which one should I use? I'm going to grab this one. How many should I put on these plates? Oh, uh, you can put two. two. Sure. Okay. Because you want to be able to sop on. it up correct. Um, Give them something to eat. Because then they're going to think we're being meager, Chef. Uh, yeah, we don't <laughs> want them to do that. Chef, you okay. know, folks that come to see me like to eat. These are your fried plantains. Yes. These are already done. Absolutely. So we're going to put a couple of these on our plate. I'm just going to grab a couple of them off of here. Okay. And line them up. And I'm going to go ahead and put that right on here. Oh, look at that. This looks fantastic. I'm going to move these plantains around to this side. Put this over here mm -hmm. so we can actually mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. these beauties mm -hmm. over here. Yes, sirree. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Okay, guys. Wake up. Caribbean style. Here we have some fried bakes, some uh, salt cod stew with salad and some fried plantains. And why don't we go ahead and plate this one up too? Absolutely. Okay, so let's do this one. And I'm going to grab a couple of these beautiful bakes here that are nice and fluffy. I'm going to put some plantains. What? Oh, there they are. I got some in the oven. Let me grab some out of the oven here. I'm going to put a couple of these on here like this. And then we'll put some salad on there. Mm -hmm. And you ready to go to the table and try eating it? Absolutely. All right. This is going to be fun. Let's put some salad on here and pop this up for the camera and everybody at home to see. Hold on to those, Miss Elsie. Will do. <laughs> now, Miss Elsie was your grandmother, right? Absolutely. Yes, that's my, the love of my life. And has, is she responsible for this recipe? Yes, she is. Awesome. And here is another one of our beautiful Caribbean breakfasts. I hope you try these recipes at home. You can see this wasn't too difficult. It was very easy. It went together lovely. So let's go to the table and eat. We'll do. Okay. So Cheryl, this looks amazing. Thank it you. looks amazing. Thank you for having us. I think that um, if I were ever to go down to one of the islands, I would definitely order one of these meals because I know what it's going to taste like. Awesome. So tell me, how do we eat this now? So we've got the bakes. Right. So what do you do? You take your bakes, mm -hmm. you take your little bit of salt fish. Okay. You delve right into it. Okay. You can put it right on top of your, your bakes. Okay. And uh, just take put a little a, bit on there and just, just take a bite? A, take a bite. Oh boy. With every bite you get a little salt fish. Okay. You take a little pinch of your plantain if you want. Oh, that's right, the plantains. Yes. Okay. You put the plantain on here too? You can, you can just bite into that. I'll just bite it. Yes. Okay. All right, so let me try this. Go Let's for see how it. this is going to be. This looks wonderful. And it's uh, the smell. Oh, the, Enjoy. Eat it and find out. Enjoy. Okay. Go for it. Cheers, dear. Cheers. <laughs> Dink. There you go. <laughs> Mmm. I can see why these are southern biscuits. Nice and flaky. Delicious. Yes. Seasoned well. Big and fluffy. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. This is going to be the happy dance all day long. <laughs> That's delicious. Yum. So start your day <laughs> with some delicious bakes. And I'm going to see. Okay. No plans. Let's see what happens if you. Cut it open. Absolutely. That's another way that we can serve it. Cut and then we have a little. Split it in half. Mm -hmm. Kind of make a little sandwich. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a little hors d'oeuvre. I'm just going to do a little bit. Oh, yum. And you fill it this up. This is delicious. And this would be a great uh, food truck piece. Oh, hey, there you go. Anybody out there with a food truck idea, try this. You know, I was a little nervous because of the scotch bonnets. But you know what? 
I can eat this. <laughs> yes, and, and, and really, it's not they're really not spicy. Overbearing. No, right. it has nice flavor right. and uh, serves really well, and it's delish. So you just put that on your Okay, finger. you're just packing that in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because mm -hmm. you want to get it all. You don't want to leave nothing behind. <laughs> you have nothing from behind for anyone else to share. Mm -hmm. Salt fish is usually the plate's usually clean. No one, there's nothing left. And I can see why. Because I don't want to leave anything behind either. We did a good job, Chef. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Delicious. Enjoyed it. Me too. Grab our recipes on our website at pbscharlotte.org, or you can email me at Pamela, P-A-M-E-L-A, dot Roberts, R-O-B-E-R-T-S, at cpcc.edu. That's a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> and I'll be happy to send you the recipes through the um, email. But in the meantime, we're going to keep eating, and I hope you enjoy these recipes, and we'll catch you on Charlotte Cooks Again. Thank you. of PBS Charlotte.